Hello folks, Matthew Peterson here from Pragmatic Works. Are you wanting to learn how to filter your data in Canvas apps? How to search your data in Canvas apps? How to combine both filtering and searching at the same time and using multiple controls to do it? Well, if that sounds like fun, then you're in the right spot. And that's exactly what we're going to get into here today. All right, so I have a Canvas app here, really basic. Two galleries, gallery on the left has park records. So each row is a unique park in Clay County. Gallery on the right are my inspection records. These are inspections that are made for those individual parks. So let's go with the first easy one, searching your data. So I have a gallery with data parks. I want my users to be able to search for a record very quickly. Now, in order to do this on my Canvas app here, I'm gonna go to my insert ribbon and I'm gonna put in a text input control. The text input control is meant for users to type something in and then we have the app do something with it. So I'm not gonna make this the prettiest app. We're gonna save time. So I'm just gonna bring this up here, keep it the same size. Functionality is what we're concerned about. First thing that I get with uh, people in like some of my classes say, Matt, my search doesn't work. I usually know the main issue. Normally it's because they left the default text input in here. When they do that, when it does the search, it's gonna look for a value called text input, which I doubt you have in your data. So you always wanna remove the default. Then for the hint text, usually it's a good idea to put it there. Uh, so something like search for park, something along those lines. Now, what I do with all my controls is I rename them because you'll see why in a second. So I'm gonna do a double click on this text input one. I'm gonna call it IMP search park. Now here's why. When we do a search, we have to put a search on our control. Now, when I first started with search, I'm like, oh, that's the search box. That's why I put the search command. No, it actually goes on the control that has the data you want to search over. So in this case, it's my gallery on the left. So I'm going to go and modify the items property, the items equal park, which means in this gallery show all the parks. Well, I want that, but I also want it to be searchable. So in front of park, I'm going to type in search and then in open parentheses. Now, I know how this formula works, so I could just start going you know, to the races, but when you're using a new formula in PowerFX, you're not sure what to do. A lot of times they're gonna give you IntelliSense, which is great, but it hides the roadmap behind you. So what I typically do is go to the end of my formula, put in a comma, and then normally I'll get my roadmap. If it still doesn't show up for you, do a question mark after the comma, and then I'm almost can guarantee you it's gonna show up. So now it says, well, where's the search text coming from? Well, it's coming from that input control. And this is why I like to give them my own names, because I might have six or seven input controls on my big canvas app. So being poignant about it can help out. So I'm gonna say, look at that control. Now, what do I wanna know about that control? What do I wanna reference? Dot, I want the text that was typed in. So that's where the search text is. Now we put in a comma. What column should we be searching for these values in? I'm gonna say, look in the park name column. So I want them to be able to search by the name of a park or maybe more. I can put in another comma and say, you know what? Maybe they wanna search by city. And then you can just keep chaining these on with commas here. All right, so now let's see if it works. So I'm gonna hit play and I'm just gonna put in the letter N. So any city that has an N, Green Cove Springs, all are gonna show up. And any park that has the letter N is also gonna show up. Now, if I do an NU or a VU, so let's go with, um, I'll go UND. So as I type more, it's gonna keep, you know, going further down. Now, the only thing I don't like is I can't get rid of my text unless I you know, backspace it out. But luckily, we have that option. If you click on your little input control down over in the properties panel, you are going to have the ability to clear out what they've put in. So a clear button will turn that on. And now if I hit play, if there is data inside the search box, we're going to get an X and I click it and it clears. No data inside, no values, no X. Put an F, boom, we've got it. All right, so now we know how to search. Let's get into filtering next. What if I want my users to filter on a specific value of a column? Like for instance here, maybe the city column. Well, if I want that, I need to add that. So I'm gonna go to my insert ribbon and we're gonna put in a control called a dropdown. Now there's two controls that you could kind of use this for this scenario. One is a dropdown, one is uh, a combo box. Uh, the drop down only lets you pick one value at a time. A combo box, you can pick multiple values if you wanted to. We're just going to deal with the drop down here. Now, I do deal with combo boxes in my other courses. So we have a new on demand learning called Advancing Your Canvas App Skills, Chapter One and Chapter Two, where we go way deeper into the basics of Canvas apps and we start going to some more of the advanced features. In the items, instead of the drop down sample, 
one, two, and three, I want to put in my cities. Now here's my issue. The cities, as you saw, get repeated. There's multiple orange parks, multiple Fleming Islands, uh, not multiple cities, but the same city, but multiple parks in those city. So I only want to show the city once. Well, in order to do that, I have to use a function called distinct. What the distinct will do is look at a column and only bring back the unique value. So if there's duplicates, they don't show up. So I'm gonna say, look at my part table, comma, and then go get all the distinct values from the city column. And that's gonna populate my dropdown now. So now if I come on over here and hit play, I hit the dropdown, bingo. You're like, nah, -uh. I see Green Cove Springs twice. I did that on purpose. When I put this data in my uh, data source, I wrote Green Cove Springs the second time with an extra space. So it's technically different from the other one. That's why it's showing up twice. So if that ever happens to you in your app, that means it's a data source issue. So I'm gonna come over here to this gallery and we know the search works. I said, I'm gonna show you how to add search and filter together. So I'm gonna keep this here for reference, but not run it. So if you put two forward slashes that comments out your code, um, and then you can reference it later down the road. So you don't have to worry about copying and pasting like in a notepad. So I'm gonna come on down here. And uh, when you put those two forward slashes in, the copilot uh, formula starts to you know, kind of get its juices flowing. Um, and you can either have it explain your formula. You can have it also kind of come up with suggestions based on what you commented out. I like their suggestion, but it's not what I want. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a filter command. We are going to say we wanna filter on the park. So we're not searching. Now we wanna find an exact match. So as you're looking at the park table, what match are you looking for? What's the test? Well, what I wanted to do is I wanted to look at the city column on the part table and I need the city column value to equal whatever the user picked in that dropdown. So dropdown one, I told you I like to rename them. We'll do that in a second. So I'm gonna say dropdown one dot selected. So dot selected. Now that's gonna be the record that we populated in the dropdown. Now we have to reference the value. So we're gonna say dot value and I'm gonna close that off. Now notice, I only see, I'll make this smaller here, I only see Orange Park. I hold down my Alt key to play and I go to Fleming Island. It's working, which is good. Now what about that dropdown? I don't like that name. I'm gonna rename it to DRP City. Now here's the good news. When you do a rename of a control, it will update that reference in your formula bar for you. Okay, beautiful. But what if we don't want to filter on a city? We want to see all of them at once. Well, we don't have that currently, but it's a hidden feature. If you click on your drop down control here, what we're going to do is move up to the properties panel and we're going to go to a property called allow empty selection. By default, it's false, which means you there's something that has to be there. We're going to set that to true. Now, if I were to save my app and refresh the browser, it would load like the first time and there wouldn't be anything there. But what if we've been playing it for a while? We want our users to be able to clear this selection out. So we're gonna do a very basic. We're just gonna put in a button. It could be anything with an on select property. I'm just gonna call this something like uh, clear city so we know what it's doing. So clear city. And then for the on select, I'm gonna say, hey, look at that control and put it back to its default. So we're gonna say reset and our control is DRP city. And I'll close that off. All right, so let's see if it works. I'm gonna hold down the alt key, clear my city and it's gone, perfect. But now we've run into a new problem. Where did all of our parts go? Well, it's all due to our filter. What we said in our filter is the city has to match that value. Well, there is no value, so there are no matches, thus no records. So how do I get all the records to return? few different ways of doing it, but I'm going to show you the more sophisticated route. I'm going to remove that last parentheses and I'm going to put in an or statement. So we're going to tell it filter on this criteria or you can filter on this criteria. Now, what's this other criteria? Well, first, let's get the or in two double pipe delimiters. That's how you get it. That's shortcut for or. Now I'm going to put in a, a formula, then I'll explain how it works. I'm going to say is blank DRP city dot selected, and I'm going to close that off. Now, what is the is blank doing? This is looking at the drop down and seeing if anything is selected. So if is blank, so nothing selected, this returns a true. Well, what does that do? Well, let's close off the whole filter. Boom. All of my parks are now there. So it does this filtering first. Nothing matched. Then it says or is blank. Well, in a filter statement, if you just put one of your parameters as comma true, that says return all of the records. Now I told you we were also gonna be able to do searching, right? Well, the filter is working and just to prove it, I think it's working. Let's come up here, Middleburg, 
Clear City. Yes, it's working. Now let's get the search added back in. So I'm gonna come back to that gallery. I'm gonna make this formula bar bigger here so we can see it. And I'll just go down a line or so. And really, I just want to search the same way. But instead of searching over all the parks, I wanna search over the filtered parks. So in front of the filter command here, I'm gonna click on my home. I'm gonna say I wanna search. The data source to search is the filtered down records. Yes, comma. I want it to, the search text is gonna come from that IMP search control dot text, comma, what columns? And I'll just put in park name again, and I can put in the city um, as well. And there we go. Now we've got it. Let's do one more filtering. We'll call this thing a, a wrap up. Let's say we want to filter based on dates. Well, if you want to do that, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to insert a date picker. So this date picker, I'll just bring it over here. Again, this is not the pretty app. I'm going to rename it to DTP uh, inspection date. And the goal is I want to filter based on the date of the inspection. All I have to do, this is really pretty simple here, is I go to that inspection gallery where I've got my items and I'm just going to come into the front and I'm gonna say filter inspection. All right, so I've got that in, comma, I wanna do it based on the inspection date, and I want it to equal whatever the user selected the date from that date picker. So if I hit play right now, notice there are none for February 25th. If I go to February 24th and I hit okay, bingo, now I've got it. So if you're just doing one date, you're good to go. Now, what if you're doing multiple dates, like a date range? Let's say that we had data that had like a start date and an end date. And when we put in, let's say February 20th, we wanna find anyone who's traveling, who has already started traveling before the 20th or on the 20th, or is still traveling and doesn't come back till the 25th or 6th or whatever it might be. So a date range can help us out with that. Now, I know I don't have it here, but let's pretend that we did because I want to make sure you would have this uh, function for your date ranges. So I'm going to go back to this gallery. And what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to say, I'm going to start it back from the beginning. So this would be if we had multiple date ranges here. So I'm going to say here, let's take a look at the inspection date. And I want the inspection date to be greater than or equal to my DTP selecting selected date. So we're basically saying that the date is um, after or equal to the date that we currently have. So this would be like your travel end date column that you would kind of be, you know, referencing here. Or, or maybe we could do an or, but I'm gonna do an and, and I want the inspection date as well. So the inspection date, I also want that to be less than or equal to our DTP inspection date dot selected date. And then I'll close this off here. So now it's gonna reference our inspection date column and it's gonna say that date value has to be bigger than or equal to the date that the user chose. And that value also has to be less than or equal to that that user has chosen. So a few different ways of, of doing it, but this is how you do it with multiple dates. All right, so we have our date ranges working in here. Now, what if I wanna make sure that I'm only seeing the parks for the park that I have selected over here? Well, that means I need to add in another statement. So I'm just gonna put in a comma here. So that's my, my whole date idea. So now I'm gonna say also I wanna filter based on looking at the park ID column on this inspection table, I need the park ID to equal the park ID of the record they select over here. Well, over here's this gallery. So let's tell it, oh, look at that. They already give it to us. They're gonna say, go look at Gal Parks, look at the selected record and refer to its park ID. And then I close that off. So now, once I have this and we get its act together and I hit play, I'm going to, um, you know what? Let's see if I can find a date in here. Okay, got a date that matches. Oh, park ID is one, beautiful. So the filter is now only showing the 17th for that park selected. Now, once again, you probably would want your users to be able to quickly, you know, reset their dates. So on this button, I'm gonna do this again. I'm gonna do a semicolon, I'm gonna reset, and I'm gonna do that date picker. And so I'm gonna click on it so that I should put it to its default. So I'm gonna hit clear city, which is also clear date two. Puts it to its default, which is the 25th. I don't really know if I want them to have a, a default date because we're saying, what if we want to see all the records with no date? Well, the reset works, but what we need to do is on the drop down of the date picker for the default date, we don't want a date to automatically be there. We're going to put it as no date. 
So now when I hold down my alt key and I clear that city and date, bingo, there is no date. Dang it, what do we have again? No records are being shown. Well, that's because it's doing the filter, but it's also doing a filter on date and there is no date to find a match, so no records. So what do we do? You probably already know. We're gonna come back here and we're gonna do some modifications, kind of like how we did on our last one. So I'm just gonna move this park ID down some and I'm gonna put in here. So with our original dates, this is where we're having the issue. We're also gonna put in, well, if it's blank, return that true, return all the dates. All right, so we're gonna put in that or statement and we say is blank our DTP inspection date dot selected date. So I'm gonna close that off. All right, and now I'll put in that comma so it gets that park ID filter as well. And so now we need to come over here, make sure everything matches, and I think we're good to go. So what's happening here right now, because no date is selected, this returns true. So right now it's gonna return all the inspection records. Then it comes down and filters those records based on the park ID. So if I were to hit play here, let's take it all for a spin. I'm gonna choose a city. I'm gonna go with Middleburg. Okay, filter is working. I'm going to click on Omega Park. All right, so I've got Omega, so good. Now I wanna find a date, I'll go with February 20th. So I'll come over here, February 20th, I'll hit OK. And bingo, only February 20th records and only for that park ID of 10. Now, could you add swords to it? Yep, you know how to do it. You know, just do it, let's just do it real quick here. Cause I definitely would want this. So in front of all this filtering, I would say I wanna sort all these records after they've been filtered, comma, I wanna do it on the date, and then I wanna do it in sort order, let's see the most recent first, sort order dot descending, and I'll close that off. Now it doesn't look like it did much here, like Matt, why'd you even add that in? Because all the dates are the same, you have a filter on dates, true. But what happens when that date is removed? Ah, no date, so now the park ID being filtered, but no filtering on dates, and they're gonna be from highest to lowest, or most recent to latest, or past, whatever. So hopefully you enjoyed. Again, we have a lot more here. If you're newer to Canvas apps, check out our Learn With The Nerds, Canvas Apps Beginner to Pro. It's a great course to get started with. And then when you're ready to advance those skills even further, on our on-demand learning, I have eight hour intro to Canvas apps course, and then some smaller courses that are advanced skills called Advancing Your Canvas App Skills Chapter One and Chapter Two, and more chapters are coming out in the future. So hopefully you enjoyed, and if that is the case, I will be seeing you in the next one.